as Marion was talking, I, I had the thought to add this last slide, and I just put down these notes just to show you uh, some things just real fast. Uh, this, this won't last too long, but this will uh, complement the information that Marion was showing us. So first, she talked a lot about adding the or learning about history and, and how it fits into our ancestors' lives. And so here's legacy. Uh, so you've, uh, you've got your ancestor here in the family view, and you go and you look at their timeline by clicking on the chronology tab. Down in the lower right-hand corner is the options button. Remember, this is, this is uh, I'm going to be showing you how to insert historical information into your ancestor's timeline. So click on display options. And here on the Include tab, you have Include Historical Timelines. So I'll click Select. And let's add a timeline file. And, and Legacy comes with quite a few uh, historical timelines in the database for different parts of the world. Um, I like to just go down to uh, this one uh, as an example. U.S. Wars, I'll click OK and save. Just make sure you've got a check mark right here and I'll show you what happens. What shows up is anything here in yellow. Uh, this is part of that historical timeline and so here in 1812 when at the age of 20 uh, the War of 1812 was going on and so that helps me know a little bit more about where, where that fits into his personal history. Uh, keep going down. There's a couple more there. I think we've got the the Civil War coming up. Yeah, so down here at the age of 68. So he was alive uh, as of the Civil War, um, which could lead you to other records, uh, but certainly information about the history of his life. Uh, one other, let me remove that one. Add this one to your ancestor or even your own timeline, the one called Inventions. And uh, I, I love this one. This will just help you see what did that relative of yours um, you know, see during their lives. Like, uh, let's see, the propeller was invented by the Englishman Francis Pettit Smith in the year 1835. Uh, the bicycle invented in 18. 39, uh, the first grain elevator. So these are things that happened during during this ancestor's uh, life. Okay, I'm going to switch back over here. So that was just uh, just real quick, showing how to add historical information to your timeline. Uh, Marion talked about the county and local histories a lot, and this is something that uh, is very powerful in Legacy, uh, if you know where to look for it. So click right up here where it says Research Guidance. And what, what that will do is, based on the facts that you've already typed in, now here there's a lot more than just the one fact, and so Legacy can give you uh, more suggestions because of that. But uh, when you head over to number three, this will give you a list of uh, possible suggestions based on the time period and location. Uh, but uh, to complement what Marion was teaching, here on the Preliminary Survey tab, if you click on Local Histories, this gives you a list, in this case, of 74 titles of the local and town and county histories related to the places where he lived. So I click on a Pioneer Outline History. Oh, that's a really long title. You can see the entire title right down here. I see that this title, uh, it must be online. So if I click on Online um, Accessible Archives, I don't know how... Is that still here? So this must be, uh, yeah, up in the Pennsylvania site. So some of those, it uh, looks like it requires some kind of a, a subscription there. Others will be uh, online, uh, you know, at other places. This one looks like it's up at Ancestry. But the neat thing is, is it will take you right to that book where you can uh, start doing your searching. Otherwise, it will have a link there for WorldCat. And so uh, just go up to WorldCat and find out where the local library is. So Legacy is able to suggest these titles to you because of what you've already typed in about that person. So the more that you type in, the better the, the suggestions are going to be. Okay, 
uh, and I, I love it, but it's kind of hidden. The last thing uh, Marion was talking about, understanding the the boundaries of the countries uh, that that surround each other, and so. While she was talking, I opened up my Centennia software, and this is something that is available in the in the legacy store. But let me change this to, let's go to the year 2000 as an example. And here I'm focused in on Germany. You can zoom out. You can see it's for Europe and the Middle East, and it actually goes all the way back to, I think, the 1100s, um, all the way to the present. And so I'll zoom in. One of the uh, problems, well even I've had several messages here today, it was about Poland and Prussia and Germany and, and those boundary changes. So what, what you do here in the software like Centennia is you change it to the year where your ancestor lived there and uh, this will show you, well this is what Germany was like at, at that time. You see how Prussia scooted over here and um, anyways just you can animate this too. So type in the year and click on the arrow and you can watch how this changes over time. Now this is also a, a tool for history and so one of these buttons up here and I never remember which one it is. I'll click on the top one. Oh good that's the right one. So that will tell you what's going on in that area at that time period. So change this back to 1850 and that history changes to what's going on in that area at that time period. Um, in, in the, was it the pre-webinar warm-up where we were talking about Animap a little bit? I don't remember. Uh, well, that seems like a long time ago now, but Animap will do a similar thing for uh, the United States and parts of Canada. Okay, so visually I think I've uh, answered some of those additional questions here in the uh, after webinar party. Uh, oh, hi Tom. Uh, yeah, Tom's asking, can I change that map? Well, where did it go now? Is it down here? You betcha, Tom. I'll open Centennia again here. Uh, what did you say back to the year 1331? Sure, I don't know that I've ever tried that. Let's see what happens. So there's 1331. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So, Tom, I don't know if that's what you wanted to see, but there you go. And Lynn is asking, where'd you go, Lynn? Where is the research guidance tab? Well, in, in Legacy here on the My Toolbar, I, that's where I have the research guidance button. I don't know if it's a default button or not. You can always right-click on the person and click on research guidance. So that's another way that you can get to it. Uh, Veronica, I like your recommendation. Is it possible to add our own ideas or sources to research guidance so it'll show up in the generated list? Not yet, uh, but check out our, our latest updates. Uh, we, we are adding the suggestions that you send in to us, and so if you've got something, um, yeah, certainly send it in. Oh, Tom, yeah, Tom writes, yeah, my people were in Flanders then. So, oh, here's Flanders, Tom. You click on anywhere in the map and it will tell you a little bit more about where you've clicked. Okay, Shirley, what was that name of the US Canada software? Here, I'll pull it up. Uh, there's a, so it's Animap, and so in Animap you just pick the place. Um, you can do a search for your town. Of course, I'm doing this real fast. And then plot it on the map. So here's the town of Ada, and in 1855 it was in this uh, unincorporated area, it looks like. So just change the map to the year that you're interested in. So here in 1861, it appears to be in Ottawa County, or Ottawa was, you know, there's something about the color of that county, and so the legend in the help file will tell you more about that. Okay, just uh, just looking at some of your other comments or questions here. How do I get the age to show on my ancestor page in Legacy? Question from Betty. Oh, you're talking about right here. I suppose that's a little that's a little uh, Legacy tip. So 
the default fact here is the cause of death, but I've changed that to the age at death. So if you just click on any of these labels, it'll let you customize that. So instead of age at death, you can change that to any of these other fields here. So I'll just say, uh, let's just say relationship. Hit select and close. So that'll show how, I mean, the relationship's above each person anyway, so you might not want that one there, but um, there you go. Okay, final question, and then i got to get ready to produce this recording and head to the airport. Let's go to a uh, question from Karen. Well, first, Connie says, have they updated Animap to work with Windows 8.1? No, it hasn't been updated, but I'm running it on Windows 8.1, and it's just fine. Uh, so question from, where'd it go? Okay, Karen, in Centennial, when you zoom in, does it show the large cities, towns, and villages? And yeah, you see all these little dots? Those represent those large towns. Let's just switch it back to modern day times. And so as you zoom in, it will give you the names of those. So it helps you get your bearings. And so if your ancestor was right here, um, and they were there in 18, let's go to 1700 this time. Just watch. So at that time, it would have been in this area. Okay, so that's how you can use it. Okay, everyone, uh, that was fun. Thanks for sharing uh, part of your day with me. Uh, fun 200. Here's to the next 200. Okay, bye-bye, everyone.